you were very young person in secondary school or even in primary school what were you thinking about those days what did you tell your teacher your teachers your friends that you are going to be when you grow up what was it that occupied your mind during that time in most cases it is this time of free thinking unlimited thinking this is the time of imaginative thinking this is the time you can go back to and find out what you really wanted to be when you grow up if it is your first time you're coming across this channel please hit subscribe and turn on notification assalamu alaikum hello and welcome my name is hussein hassan today we are going to talk about mastery there is a book written by robert green and it is titled mastery the future he says the future belongs to those who learn more skills and combine them in creative ways robert green has written many books and the last one he has written is called mastery he wrote this book in 2012 and this book explains not only his own approach to master the skill of writing but also the path to all masters seem to take now to learn many skills and combine them in a creative way you need three things you need total effort of your heart your mind and soul working in tandem robert green says about a situation where a person does not pursue any skills it is in fact he says it is in fact the height of selfishness to merely consume what others create and to retreat into a shell of limited goals and immediate pleasures you are not a spectator watching games or even for example football to merely consume what other people are performing so you are a very special person and you have been brought into this world for special reasons it takes some effort a great deal of effort i should say to discover your mission on earth and this is the first challenge it is never too late for you to discover what you have been brought here to do so let me just give you some few examples of skills you can develop number one is the skill of business of acquiring business acumen or the ability to inculcate into your system the ability to take quick and productive business decisions another example is public speaking another one is writing skills problem solving skills leadership and teamwork skills negotiation and persuasion skills these are skills that are useful in any profession so it will take you a bit of effort to discover yourself and also find out what skills you are inclined to develop there are three steps outlined in this book by robert green the mastery there are three steps to take to discover and to develop a given skill let me start with the first one the first one is about trusting your instinct trusting your guts trusting what your inner voice 
tells you all the time. Imagine when you are when you are very young person in secondary school or even in primary school, what were you thinking about those days? What did you tell your teacher, your teachers, your friends that you are going to be when you grow up? What was it that occupied your mind during that time? In most cases, it is this time of free thinking, unlimited thinking. This is the time of imaginative thinking. This is the time you can go back to and find out what you really wanted to be when you grow up. This is the first part you need to indulge yourself. You need to go back and dig so that at least you have a clue of what you want to be. We have to overcome a lot of challenges. We spend so much time blending in and hiding behind crowds that we have become scared to listen to our, our inner voice. Finding, as I have said, finding your true calling is not easy. It may take a while, some deep digging, and a whole lot of testing. Now, when, we, when I say testing, it means trying this skill, if it doesn't work for you, try another skill. If it doesn't work for you, don't give up. Try another skill. Until you will come across the skill that you are meant to work with. It will take a lot of patience. It will take a lot of perseverance. But if you have to go very far, you have to try and try and try and never give up. This is the first step. Trust your instinct. Trust your guts and find out through trial. It has never happened. Maybe very few in very few cases that the first time you try something, you make it work. It is very difficult to do that. So what happens is people keep on trying. Learning is about repetition. Learning is about trying again and again and again until you become very good in that. So number one, trust your inner voice. Trust your guts. Trust your feelings. Trust what you are telling yourself, yes, this is what I want to do. And do it. Step number two is about learning. And the learning <clears throat> involves learning from another person or institution. And this is about apprenticeship. It is common knowledge that the more you are good in what you are doing, the more you earn. No one is really going to help you no one is going to help you or give you direction. In fact, the odds are against you. Normally, people don't like helping other people. There is this selfish instinct in most people that if you help this person, he is going to overtake you. So the responsibility of looking for apprenticeship is on you. And these days, education contents are readily available in the internet. So go out and look for materials that will add value to the skills you are going to learn. Once you decide a field or a discipline or any skill to master the best way to make any progress, to make progress, 
faster is through learning from a person who is an expert in that field. You do not want to reinvent a wheel. It has already been invented. So take that and build on that knowledge. Don't focus on the money part of it. Many times people are tempted to focus on how much am I going to get out of this. In this second stage, don't focus on the money. Focus on gaining the skills to a competitive level where people will start looking for you. That's how it happens. When you see someone who is good in a field and the demand for his skills also grow up. Always know that learning has a much bigger return on investment than being paid more money for a job that does not involve learning new skills. This is a fact. Any job you do that does not involve growing has limited potential growth in it in terms of returns, in terms of financial returns. So this second step is about learning the skill. Don't worry about how long it is going to take you to master. In normal circumstances, 4,000 to 10,000 hours. If you put in 10,000 hours, that means unless you have been doing it wrongly, that means you are going to be an expert in that field. So put in the time and the return will come out automatically. So step number one is to trust your instinct, trust your feelings, trust your guts. Number two is take an apprenticeship. Learn first. Let's go to step number three. Challenge everything you know Challenge everything you learned, the rules your mentor taught you. Challenge everything you have learned from your master. Challenge everything from your mentor. Challenge everything from your teacher. Challenge everything that is done commonly. This is your chance to make new discoveries challenge everything is step number three you have to challenge what you have learned is it the only way of doing this thing why is everybody doing it this way if you do not question you will run the risk of doing things monotonous, doing things just for the sake of it until you get bored with it. By the end of your apprenticeship, you'll have developed your own unique way of doing something. This is key. People will try to restrain you. No, no, don't, don't, don't do it this way. No, no, no. Don't, don't. It has never been done like that. Now, this is your chance to say, no, hang on one minute. Let's try if the results will be different. People will discourage you. They will tell you, no, it has not been done that way. No one I have seen has ever done it that way. Please don't do it. You tell them, hold on. Let me do it. Let me see how it will turn out. You see, that's not the end. You see, once you venture on your own, it is not the end. You will face challenges because you are 
going into uncharted territory. You have never done it before. You have always been guided by someone. So this time, it's like the first time you've completed your driving lesson and then you are on the road on your own. How do you feel for those who have done driving? You feel scared? You feel anxious? You fear to get involved in accident? You are not sure whether you are going to reach your destination because of, you know, one thing or another. You fear you may get lost if you are going into a new area. There is always that feeling of what if. Now, don't worry about that what if. Every day is going to be a struggle unless you are going to do something that you have been doing for the last 10, 15 years. But every day, even in those kind of situations, you are going to feel anxious in some days. So don't worry, keep going, focus, and then expect the best is going to happen. Now, if you are going to be involved in gaining a new skill, it is not me to tell you it is worth it. It must come from you. So the question is, is it worth it? You decide. You tell us once you have completed the process, tell the world, was it worth it? Was it worth it? Or you can take the second option of just keep on giving excuses. No, I can't do it. No, it's not the right time. You know, I'm not prepared. You can also do that. But if you have to be where you want to be, you have to take risks and you have to start today. Until next time, keep it here. See you.